Hello game makers, this is game maker Rob and today's episode is going to be regarding an advanced camera system. It was a suggestion and voted on by my patrons in the discord. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the features one by one. Uh, first of all, if we press M, we can cycle between different characters. What's this going to be useful for? Um, it just It's just going to allow you to focus on whatever character you, you want um, or the, how we're doing that is just having uh, a target ID and the camera will clamp the camera's target X and Y becomes the character's X and Y and you can see that it takes a little bit of time to get from person to person uh, you can make that as slow or as fast as you want you can have it you know like really drag, drag behind or you can make it instantaneous it's up to you um, any of the the, uh, the values in this tutorial can be changed during the game. So everything's modular like that. Uh, as well as clamping to different characters. Uh, another request was to make it so the camera wouldn't go past the room limits. So in a lot of games, especially my games, I allow the uh, camera to go way past the room boundaries and I just use the background layer to display tiles if you don't want to do that and you want to clamp it to the rooms then this is what uh, that's what this is for basically you get this kind of effect you can see that uh, the camera doesn't center on the character if it's going to take the camera past the boundaries but as soon as the character moves uh, outside of the boundary it will be centered again like that uh, we also have a shake feature you can make the shake as dramatic and as long or as short as you want just by changing the variables uh, and we have zooming so you can zoom in like this like a scary picture or you can move you can zoom out and that's it so we're just gonna get into the code now so I should probably show you a few setup things first as well um, you don't need to copy this it's just how I have things set up for my project uh, I have a control object and it's just going to uh, store the player sprites and a couple of enumerators um, and it's mainly going to control how the uh, characters look, how they move um, and it's just based on which one of them is, is the target of the camera. That's all it's for. In the begin step uh, this is player input. Uh, this little bit, basically all it does, it stores the IDs of the three different characters because when we want to center the camera on a character, we need to pass the ID to the camera. The camera has a variable called target and target is gonna equal this ID. And that's how we know which character to follow. Uh, the rest of it, uh, this just switches between uh, which one is going to be the target. You don't have to do it this way. Um, the important line to know is obj.target equals whatever's stored in here, which is going to be an ID. So as long as you're past, as long as you're setting target to an ID, it will work uh, as as you like. It's worth noting that you can still move the camera around without a target uh, just by setting the camera's target X and Y which I'll show you now so in the create event so target equals no one normally it, it would uh, if it's following someone it's going to equal an ID uh, target X and Y this is where the camera is going to be moving to uh, this can be set uh, irrespective of whether there's a target or not uh, camera speed equals 16. This is how fast the camera is going to move to the target X and Y. Uh, set it to a low number for slow and a high number for instantaneous. If we go into the player objects, so uh, inside here it's just, this is just for movement basically and just for controlling the animations uh, for the character. And the step event is just more of the same. It's just my basic movement code and what sprite they're going to have. So, like I said, you don't need to copy that. 
Um, it's worth noting, though, if you are one of my sorcerer patrons or one of the great ones, then you will be able to get this file for free um, as part of the Patreon folder from itch. Uh, otherwise, I'll make this available uh, to buy on itch as well. If, for example, you want the full thing, I'll tidy uh, the code up a bit as well because there's a few leftovers in there from the project that I cannibalized for this one. So if we go into the step event of OBJ camera, uh, this is how we make the camera move from place to place. Uh, half view width and height will get uh, half the width and height of the camera. If we have a target and the target exists, then target X equals the target's X plus grid size divided by two. Uh, why do we need grid size divided by two? Uh, you might not, but for me, my sprites are drawn from the top left and I don't want the camera to center here. I want it to center here. So rather than change the sprites, I just added this bit onto it, that's all it's for. Uh, if we don't have a target or the target doesn't exist, then just set the X and Y, the target X and Y to the camera's X and Y. If we are still moving, so either X isn't gonna equal this or Y isn't gonna equal this, then we want to know how far away from the target X and Y we are. Uh, this is because, say for example, uh, you see the camera speed is 16, uh, but we might only be um, 8 away from the X coordinate and 20 away from the Y coordinate. We don't want to move the full 16. We only want to move the 8 on the Y. So that's why we're checking for it. Uh, ABS, very useful function um, because you don't know which one of these is bigger. So we're doing ABS of X distance. So if if this is greater than camera speed, then just do it as normal. Otherwise, just add the X distance. So if the X distance was eight, it wouldn't move 16. It would just move eight, as I explained. And then we just want to clamp the X and Y to make sure we don't go outside the room boundaries. So that's what this is for. And then we just want to set the camera position. And that's how we get around with the camera. Okay, so next, if we check out the shake function, so uh, whether we are wanting to shake or not, uh, shake X and shake Y, we're gonna be adding these to the camera view, so, uh, if you look at the step event here, we've got plus shake X, plus shake Y. This is what moves the view around and what this is what makes it shake basically, adding shake and Y. So normally shake X and shake Y would be zero. So we're adding nothing to the view, but when we're shaking, they're gonna be adding some, somewhere between minus five and five. Um, I've made all of these variables uh, just so you can change them during the game. So sometimes you want it, you might want it to be minus two, two. Other times you might want it to be minus 10 and 10. And you will just set this the same way as you change the uh, target variable. Just change it in the same way. Let's go back to five for now. So shake duration is how long the shake is gonna last for. And shake timer uh, just counts up to shake duration and then that's when the shake gets set back to false. So the code for this, so if shake is true, see up here I've got, uh, if global pressed okay, shake is true, which is just space bar for me, then we're gonna get a random range for shake X and shake Y, which is between minus five and five, and then run the shake timer. Uh, this wants to be in the step and you want it to change every step. That's what creates the shake. And then, like I said, once the shake timer reaches shake duration, make sure we're setting shake X and Y to zero and the shake timer and stop the shake. 
Okay, so we are going to be doing the Zoom section next. Uh, I've been messing around with it some more since I recorded the last segment because I'm not entirely happy with it. Uh, but I think it will take a lot more fine tuning to to make things smoother than they are. And the result we've got now uh, is what was re- requested. It's okay. So we're going to go with it for now. Uh, in the create event, we are going to have a couple of variables, base view width and base view height. So the starting width and height of the room, uh, maximum zoom out, maximum zoom in. Uh, this just limits how far out and in we can zoom. Uh, zoom level, this is the current zoom level. Um, I wanted it to be more than the starting room, so it's going to be about a double starting size. And uh, zoom change, uh, how many, how far in and out are we going to be going every time we move the mouse button, scroll button, up, up or down. Um, smaller numbers will make for a smaller zoom, bigger numbers make for a bigger zoom. And this line here uh, just sets the initial view size uh, using these three variables like so. So in the step event, we're just checking for mouse wheel up or down. Um, If it's down, then plus equal to zoom change, uh, making sure that we're not going past the max zoom out. Um, If we are gonna go past the max zoom out, then just set zoom level to max zoom out. Same thing for mouse wheel up, uh, making sure we're still greater than max zoom in. Otherwise, just set it, cap it, max zoom in. Um, and whether, we're plus, whether we are pressing up or down on the mouse wheel, uh, we wanna get the new width and height for the view, which is what these two lines are gonna do and then just set the view size here. And and that's pretty much it. So uh, quite a bit of functionality uh, with not too much code. A big thank you again to all my patrons and everyone else who's been active in the Discord. Uh, Your suggestions for uh, this tutorial was was awesome. And if anybody else would like to join us, uh, the Discord link is in the description box. I will catch you next time. Bye for now. Boop, 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 boop.